morning. It is good to see you. It is good to be with you online as we gather for worship this morning. Uh, this morning is the third Sunday in Advent, and so in a, in a moment, uh, Brenda's going to come up and do the reading and prayer and light the Advent candle for us. And Advent this Sunday is joy. And so if you look on the, on the wreath, there's three purple candles, a white candle for Christmas, uh, for the Christ candle, but there's this pink candle, this one that stands out, uh, which is the joy candle. And joy is a, a thing we're going to be looking at today during this sermon. It's such a strange concept because it's often tied with feelings. But there is something that we read throughout Scripture about the joy of the Lord, about being in relationship to God that brings joy that rises above and moves beyond circumstance. So as we gather this morning for worship, um, keep that in mind. What is real joy? And, and we'll look at that uh, as we conclude our time in the book of Malachi through this Advent season. Again, a special welcome to everybody who's here with us this morning, those who are joining online, following the Advent moment that Brenda's going to lead us through. Um, we're going to look at it, we're going to have a song played on video uh, because we're still in the no singing zone, uh, but it's a, by a group called City Alight, and it's a church in Australia uh, down there, and, and this group of musicians that are down there. And, and one of the neat things during this COVID season is I've been expanding my music um, interests or, or viewing. And this song uh, they've, is called Jesus Strong and Kind, and it's a beautiful story of who we can come to. Uh, throughout all seasons of life, who walks with us in all seasons of life, who we gather to worship this morning as his people, Jesus, strong and kind. And so at this moment, I'll invite Brenda up to lead us in the Advent reading and prayer, and then we will, um, the music, or the song, Jesus, strong and kind, will play for We light this third candle in Advent, this candle of joy in preparation for the celebration of the Nativity, and also as a reminder of Christ's second coming. This candle offers us a light during these difficult times, challenging times. I'm reading from Isaiah 40, 1 to 6, and then 28 to 31. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sins have been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley should be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the reminder that we may have joy that only comes through Christ's arrival. Thank you, Lord, that our joy is independent on what's going on around us, but because of your coming, and that joy is a gift that you have given to us. Amen. I never thought in my life I would do so much praying as I have in these last few months. Prayers work, but prayer does work. My 
Let's move. A merciful Heavenly Father. These are difficult times. We realize that we got to lean on you more and more. We know you're there whenever we do need you. The whole world is shaken and saddened due to the to the virus. And at this time when all of creation is suffering and under great pain, we claim your living words and ask for your mercy toward all of humanity. Hold us close to you. Surround us with your warmth. Protect us from the, from the crisis that we are facing each and every day. Merciful God, at this time, it's so hard, so difficult for us to, to see light in the midst of the pandemic. And all we see is darkness around us. And our hopes are shaken and scattered with so much misery. Lord, we trust you and we believe in your mighty name. Help us to see light, light in you. Help us to build hope in you. Help us to make peace in you. And grant, grant that we may be firmly established in Christ, doing the work of Christ, and that we will be filled with the love of Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We pray for the members of Crescent Heights Baptist Church. We pray for husbands and wives who whose love, I'm sure, have been challenged this year. Some had their love strengthened because of it. And others, their marriages are in danger of falling apart. Father, be with them. When the love is failing, but to restore the love they had once for each other again. Father, I pray that you be with the youth of our church. They be with youth all over, and the children. We think of adults only being the ones who are affected by it, but more and more young people are feeling the stress of this. Father, we pray for people who live alone, that they may find a fellowship here and a deepening relationship with you. Father, we pray that you be with those who are ill and afflicted. Father, I pray that you be with those who are at home who are ill that you will give them comfort, strength. Put your healing hand upon them, that they may see the light at the end of the tunnel. Father, be with those who are in the hospital, who have been operated on or who are waiting for the result of tests. I pray, Father, that you be with them, that you will comfort them. In the moments where they feel so alone, I pray that you will fill that empty spot in their lives 
with your own presence, with your own touch. Father, I pray also that you be with those who, who have lost someone because of the virus or someone suffering in the family with the virus. I pray, Father, that you will give them comfort and strength and see them through this difficult period, that they can look ahead with great expectations to be well again someday soon. Father, I pray that you be with the lonely people, the ones who are by themselves and have no one to relate to. Father, as I saw, talked to this lady this week, who's so desperate, has no one to turn to except the Lord. And sometimes she feels that her prayers are coming back to her for it. I pray that you be with her. I pray that you be with the ones who are who have been diagnosed with brain cancer. I pray that you be with them, that you will comfort them. Father, that they may have hope in you, knowing that all things will be well. Father, we pray for healing on them as well. Father, and many people that we ought to, ought to pray for. Father, we pray that your presence may be ever more real to the people of our church and of our community. And Father, may you become a reality to those who are suffering around the world, that they may focus on you, knowing that they're not alone, that whatever problem they have, whatever difficulty they go through, they're not alone, that you're there walking with them right through it. And Father, I now pray that you be with Pastor Tyler as he speaks to us from your word and from his heart. And we ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. Amen. Malachi 4, 1 to 6, the coming day of judgment. The Lord of heaven's army says, the day of judgment is coming, burning like a furnace. On that day, the arrogant and wicked will be burned up like straw. They will be consumed, roots, branches, and all. But for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings, and you will go free, leaping with joy like calves led out to pasture. On the day when I act, you will tread upon the wicked as if they were dust under your feet, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Remember to obey the law of Moses, my servant, all the decrees and regulations that I gave him on Mount Sinai for all Israel. Look, I am sending you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord arrives. His preaching will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. Thank you, Julie, for reading the scripture to us this morning. Pastor Cornell for leading us in prayer. Uh, Brenda for uh, leading us in the Advent moment to kick things off. Um, listening to that passage in the context of joy, in the context of us this morning, actually doesn't feel very joyous, does it? The day of judgment is coming. The things are going to be burnt up. It, it's, it's got this kind of dreadful atmosphere to it. Before we dive into that passage, I want to do a couple things. First, I want to tell you about the things that I'm finding super exciting uh, over the last eight months. And here are a few of them. So when you think about that passage, and then you think about the, the um, drawing that Jacqueline did. So for those of you who are in the service, you would have seen it as you came in. For those of you online, uh, you saw at the beginning of the service. But the drawing that Jacqueline did for Malachi is a picture of a man and a picture of a calf that's leaping, that's going after, going towards the man with great joy. And that's the, that's the phrases that Malachi uses kind of in the beginning parts of chapter 4. But the reason I mention that is 
every week, I look with anticipation as to what Jacqueline is going to draw. There, it's up on screen in here now. Well, thanks, guys. I, I look with anticipation and excitement about how she's going to uh, depict the passage that we're looking at through art. Another thing I really love about the last number of months is seeing people who would never join online or participate in something online taking the risk of doing that. And so this past Tuesday, we had a prayer meeting, and the prayer meetings now are, are and we have them every Tuesday, are online, and David and Marion joined, and they had all sorts of difficulty uh, with getting Zoom up and running, but they persevered through it, and we got it all figured out, and we joined together, and we prayed together. I love that there's been so many people, there's a number of people in our church who've joined Facebook. Uh, I'm not excited or care that they joined Facebook. I'm excited and joined that they're willing to join Facebook to be a part of what's going on on Sundays. Those stories, these things that people are reaching out and trying and experimenting with new things, these, those bring me joy and excitement. And I don't want to tell you those just as a, hey, that's what Tyler thinks is interesting. I want you to remember those because that's actually the end of the sermon right there. When we get to the end of the sermon, those are examples of what I'm talking about or will be talking about in terms of what it means to be filled with joy, to experience joy, to live in the joy of the Lord. That anticipation, that excitement about what could be or what ways we can connect together. And so let's dive in now to where we are. I don't know about you, but the general atmosphere that I hear from people, that I see on TV, that I experience most days in the week, is that I feel and that people feel tired. Would that be accurate? Do you, as people, feel tired? And maybe, not just tired, but maybe you're tired and you're not entirely sure why I feel tired. Last morning, uh, sitting, Nathan and I were having breakfast, and I said to him, how was your sleep? He said, huh, it was good. I slept, but I don't feel tired rested. I think that's the general atmosphere we experience right now. And many of us feel a certain way for whatever reason, but wish it wasn't the feeling we had. We feel that tiredness, we feel kind of worn out, we feel what, something blah. And but what we really want is to feel excited. What we really want is to, to run and leap and play. We want to be kind of like that calf in the drawing. We want to, maybe for those who enjoy superhero comics, we want to be Clark Kent pulling off his button-down shirt and a big blazing S being revealed, and we want to feel the sense of we're going out and we're going to save the day. And so the question is, is that even possible? There's a ridiculous movie from a number of years ago called Monty Python and the Search for the Holy Grail. And in this ridiculous movie, for those who know Monty Python is a, or don't know, it's an English uh, group that did all these ridiculous skits. They had all sorts of crazy uh, skits. But in this particular movie they did, Search for the Holy Grail, King Arthur is out on his venture to get to Camelot. And he comes upon, he and his um, assistant, let's say, uh, they see a black knight who's fighting a man and he defeats the man. And so Arthur approaches the black knight who stands there very stoic, unmoving. And he says to him, look, I want you to join our group. I'm searching out the bravest and strongest knights in the land to join me uh, at Camelot to lead uh, England. And the, the black knight doesn't move. And so Arthur is kind of perturbed and irritated by this guy who doesn't speak, who doesn't move. And so he goes to walk by him, and the black knight says, none shall pass. He recognizes that his role is to keep people from passing him. We don't know why or for what purpose, but he recognizes his mission and his job and he stays there. And so Arthur says, you can't stop me. I'm going to defeat you. And they engage in a sword battle. And Arthur chops off the Black Knight's left arm. And the guy looks down at his arm and he looks back up and he goes after Arthur again. He says, all it is is a scratch. Come on, you pansy, keep fighting me. Arthur and the Black Knight fight and he chops off his right arm. And so this black knight, he's missing both arms. He looks, Arthur bends down to thank God for the victory, and the guy comes up and kicks him. And they continue battling, and he's like, are you insane? What is going on? He says, I'm going to get after you. And so Arthur comes, and he takes off his right leg. And now he's hopping around. He's going to try to headbutt him. He cuts off his left leg. The man is sitting, no arms, no leg, this black knight, looking up, and he says, 
we'll call it a draw. <laughs> That's the kind of spirit I wish I sometimes had. That no matter the circumstances, no matter the difficulties, no matter the, the maladies that I encounter, my understanding, my vigor for the mission before me, the life before me, just persevered. It is a silly skit. But there is something deeper within that what's going on there that is throughout the scripture. And that's where we come to here in Malachi chapter 4. Again, remember the context that we've been in. Malachi, or God through Malachi, has chastised the people of Israel, the priests, and the common folk for the first couple of chapters, saying, look at you guys, you have lost what it means to be my people. He's talking about the context in which they're currently in. In chapter 3, the, the last two chapters, the conversation turns to where things are going. And so they enter into a series of question and statement and answer between God and the people is the language or the, the text that is going on there. And the questions that the people ask in response to the statements God makes are these. How have we wearied the Lord? Where is the God of justice? Who can stand if God actually does finally come down? How are we to return to you, God? We don't have a way. How have we robbed God? And what have we said against God? God is accusing the people of all these things, and these are their responses back to him. They're wanting to know, whether genuinely or not, how have we caused trouble? God hasn't, doesn't seem to be present. He doesn't seem to be around. Everything seems worn out. Even the evil people and the wicked, even them, they're succeeding. What's the point in serving God? The people of Malachi's day are weary. They're tired. They feel like they're being pressed in on every side. They have a legitimate reason for despair. God's people are suffering the same fate that everybody else is suffering. And at the end of these questions and statements and answers, God says, look, there's going to be this book of righteousness. And this is the end of chapter 3. There's going to be a book of remembrance where the righteous will be written in there, where it'll be written for those who keep my commands, for those who know me, who, for those who persevere, to remember that I, the Lord God, am faithful. That I've protected you from the days of of Moses when I led you out of Egypt. I've protected you in, during the days of captivity in which you find yourselves in. I've been present speaking my voice to you. They will have this book of remembrance to remember that I, the Lord God, am with you. And then as Julie read for us in chapter 4, there's this warning. A day is coming. A day is coming where Everything is going to be fulfilled. Everything you've been persevering in, everything where you think things have flipped upside down and aren't going as they should be, it will be taken care of. And for those of you who know me, you will be like a calf who's well-fed and released from the stall to run and jump and play. For those of you who know me, it's going to be a time of excitement and fulfillment and gathering back together with one another and with me. The word specifically, the, the, the language that's used, is that at the beginning, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, is the day is coming that will burn like a furnace. And for those who are righteous, those who are pursuing the heart of God, pursuing the love of God, reflecting the glory of God, remaining faithful to the call of God, it will be a blazing sun of righteousness when the day burns. But for those who've gone their own way, those who have done their own thing, those who have undermined a neighbor or found uh, fallen solace in false gods, for those, it's going to be hot. It's going to be dry. It's going to be a trampling on. And so you have this contrast where this burning day, this hot day, this fiery, furnacey kind of day, for the righteous will be like a glorious sun. And for those who don't know the Lord, who haven't understood who he is and what it means to surrender to the God of creation, for those it's going to be a completely different experience. And before we get too far down the path of thinking about heaven and hell or about 
um, eternal damnation and, and all these things that sometimes make us uncomfortable. Remember that this came like 2,500 years ago. This message came years and years and generations upon generations, century upon century before you and I. And so there's a common specific context back then, just as there's a common specific context right now, that precedes a heaven and hell kind of conversation. The day is coming when God will walk amongst us whom we celebrate and anticipate during the Advent when the words of Jesus will be like a hot burning furnace that for those who follow God will be like a righteous son. Because the words that Jesus spoke to us are things like, love your enemy. The words Jesus spoke to us are, lay down your life for one another. The words Jesus spoke to people were, when someone asks you to go one mile, go with them too. Those kind of words, for those who understand who God is, who realize the love of Christ, for them, it becomes that joy bubbling up. It becomes that experience of serving God and loving the people around us. But for those of us who turn inwardly, for those of us who stay focused on ourselves, who serve false gods, when Jesus says, love your enemy, you say, are you insane? I need to protect myself. When Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself, you say, no, but my neighbor parks his car in front of my house all the time and his dog poops on the front lawn. It just makes us mad and frustrated and irritated. And so the words of Christ are like a burning furnace that dry our skin and and chafe our hide and make us really frustrated. And so the words that God spoke to Malachi, this coming day of the Lord, when, when God would be present amongst his people, really does fit with us, sit with us, play into our lives right here and right now. Because for those who understand what God is at work doing, For those who understand that God is creation or creator, that he created you and I, that he walks with us through these difficult and trying times, we will be like James who said, consider it pure joy. Consider it pure joy when you suffer trials of many kinds because those opportunities are the opportunities to make us more like Jesus. But for those of us who turn the other way, Right here, right now, it means that when restrictions get put on us, when age affects us, when illness or intrudes into our life, when people pass away, or we go bankrupt, or lose a job, those situations just become irritations, or worse, that make us focus on something else, that make us feel like God is after us and attacking us. They're not the things that bring us joy. They're the things that make us more and more tired because we just cry out and wonder, when is it ever going to end? When am I going to get my fair share? And God calls the people in Malachi's day just as Jesus called the people in his day in which he's still calling you and I today to turn our eyes to him, to trust in him, to remember, as the book of Remembrance in chapter 3 says, that God has been faithful from creation through Abraham and Moses and exile and death and resurrection and life here in 2020. Remember that God has been faithful. And so he says that in verse 4, Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and the laws I gave him at Horeb, or Sinai, for all of Israel. Remember who God is. And so I want us to look at three phrases, three things we can remember. Remember the who, not the what. Remember who God is, not what circumstance you're in. When we remember who God is, we remember that he created us. Remember that he loves us. Remember that he walks with us. We remember that he journeys through the valley together with us. When we focus on the what, we see all the difficulties. We see all the restrictions. We see all our financial troubles. We see all our aging issues. We see all our wayward children problems. We see our neighbor who just causes us grief. 
Remember the who, not the what. Secondly, remember the why, not the how. Why do we follow the law of Moses? Why do we follow after Jesus? It's to proclaim the glory of God, to be fruitful and multiply, to love God and love our neighbor as ourself. Remember why we do all these things, not what we have to do, or not how we have to do it. Not remembering what we used to do and longing to go back to that once again. We remember the why of we're gathering here in a distance, why we're online, why we wear masks. We remember the whys because it's to be the people of God and to reflect his glory into all aspects of life. And thirdly, we want to remember the where, not the when. When we focus on the when, we focus on when is this ever going to end? When are we going to get back to normal? But when we focus on the where, we say wherever we find ourselves, we are going to follow God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Whatever situation we find ourselves in, we're going to trust God with every aspect of our lives. Whatever place in time that we find ourselves, we're going to make disciples, we're going to follow his word, we're going to pursue him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so we remember the who, not the what. We remember the why, not the how. We remember the where, not the when. And so when I think back to anticipating Jacqueline's drawings every week, I'm not looking for a picture to satisfy me. I'm looking for a picture that reflects God's glory. When I see people struggling with technology and the different things going on, I remember that they're pursuing the why, not the how. When I see families coming together, when I see neighbors looking after neighbors, I remember the where, not the when. Because we're realizing that right now I can be a good neighbor to those around me. Right now I can be a good friend or father or husband. Right now, in this moment, in this space, God's mission is still at work within me. And when we focus on the who and the why and the where, the joy of the Lord is able to work through us. Because we're focused on who it is that God, that God has called us. We're focused on why he's called you and I. And we're focused on where we can operate, which is everywhere, really. And so as you go about and think about the season of life we're in, whether it's COVID restrictions, whether it's age restrictions, whether it's health restrictions, whether it's any other restrictions that you may find, my invitation to you, my encouragement to each one of us would be to follow the words of that song. It says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his face. Know that he loves you with everything he has. Know that he laid down his life for you in order that we might not only experience his joy and his son of righteousness right now, but then one day for those who trust in him, they will experience, we will experience that throughout eternity. Joy isn't just a matter of perspective, of seeing the, the good instead of the bad. Joy is trusting in who God is and recognizing that with that, unfortunately, there is heartache. There are difficult circumstances that occur. But when we focus on the who, when we focus on the why, when we focus on the where, his joy will bubble through us because we will know who he is. We will know why he calls us, why he called us, and we will know where we can reflect his glory, engage in his mission, and love him with everything we have and our neighbor as ourself. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that you created us. That through the thick and thin, through the difficult circumstances, Malachi's, the people of Malachi's, they found themselves in that, that we find ourselves in today. The difficult circumstances that will accompany life as long as it is lived. We know, Lord, that we can trust you. We praise you for your faithfulness to us and to your creation worldwide. We thank you, Lord, that you loved us so much. Not only did you enter as a babe in this time that we celebrate at Christmas, but you laid down your life as an adult in the time that we celebrate around Easter. We praise you for your goodness to us. Help us to remember that you are present with us and that no matter what difficulties we face, in you there is joy. In you there is peace. In you there is hope. And as we will pay attention to next week, in you there is love. 
We praise you for your gift of life to us today and a season to celebrate once again that the King has come and his name is Jesus. Amen. Uh, share stories back and forth about things that are bringing you joy, ways that you're keeping your eyes focused on Jesus during this season of life. Just a few announcements before we conclude our time together. Uh, thank you to everyone who came out on Friday to record uh, the, the candle lighting. Uh, we think it's going to look really good. It looked great when I was perched up in the baptismal tank, uh, watching people come in as, as we got everything lit up here in the, uh, in the sanctuary with candles. And as you can see, nothing burnt down. Uh, so that was good. There's no mishaps there. Um, we, there's still opportunity, though, to participate in the Christmas Eve service in terms of the video and, and service that's being put together. We would love if people would record like a 30-second to one-minute uh, video of themselves, family at home, uh, either putting an ornament on the tree and then sharing um, like a Christmas tradition that you follow, if you can keep it kind of a short Christmas tradition, or something you're excited about or anticipating uh, in 2021. And so we're going to incorporate those videos. That's why it has to be limited to like 30 seconds to a minute. So we can incorporate those into the Christmas Eve service, uh, which will be uh, played on uh, Facebook and, and on the website on Christmas Eve. And more details about timing and all that will come out soon. Um, thank you as well to those who've donated already the Calgary Pregnancy Care Center. Sunny's been here the last two Saturdays, and she will be here this upcoming Saturday, collecting donations from uh, people in the neighborhood, people here uh, within the churches. Um, for the Pregnancy Care Center. They're actually all, what's being collected so far is stacked up here behind. And there are still envelopes for anyone who wants to take one of those, um, or a grouping of those uh, devotional envelopes this, and the Star Christmas Craft to hand to friends and family and neighbors, if you like. And finally, last announcement for this morning, and you've seen it in the announcements. Again, everything is on the webpage. But um, Ange is starting a WhatsApp Bible, greed, Bible reading group uh, in 2021. And the idea is that to read through the Bible together um, in 2021. And so uh, WhatsApp is a, a texting platform that's cross-platform, and it'll be a, a group of people, whoever wants to commit and be a part of it, and just a way of encouraging one another and holding each other accountable uh, to reading through and studying the scriptures last year. And so information on that is on the website as well. I think that is all the announcements uh, for today. Let's conclude with the benediction. Lord God, we've gathered in your presence. Your blessing is upon us. Your spirit is in us. You are moving and proclaiming your glory throughout the corners of the world. We pray, Lord, that as we go out from this place, that you would lead us and guide us. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. May the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you as you go forth from this place, knowing who he is, why he's called you, and where it is you can fulfill the mission of God being obedient to him. We ask your blessing, Jesus, on today. Lead us as we go about our week. Amen. Thank you once again for joining with us. Go with peace, for the blessing of God is upon you.